This virus affects us all. Two of my own children have now contracted it. And this morning, oh. I, I tested positive for COVID-19 as Look well. Look how smugly satisfied he is. He's like, I sh- I'm showing you. I'm showing you. I told you it was a big deal. I told you it was super serious. And now my family has it. Yeah. Now I have it. I can't wait to see how affected he is with well, this terrible disease that he shut down his country for. Yeah, he should have stayed in fucking Canada then. Stay out of the United States while he's hiding from the the, the truckers that were going to, uh, you know, burn down. Do some terrible things. Yeah. yeah. No symptoms. Oh. Of course, I'll be working remotely this week. No symptoms. Yeah. Oh, no way. Wow. A young man with COVID. And, I mean, okay. Week. But- and we'll keep following public health guidelines. I want to take this opportunity to remind Canadians to please get vaccinated. I want to be very clear. We are not intimidated by those who hurl insults and abuse at small business workers and steal food from the homeless. Okay, can I ask you something? Do you know where that claim, where does that claim come from? I don't know. That's exactly what I was thinking to myself. Uh, it's like, like uh like I guarantee you that like the people and the trucker convoys and stuff are much more pro small business than uh Justin 100%. Trudeau has been. Yeah. And uh I mean I'm sure there are people, everybody is an individual and they have their own beliefs or whatever. There's probably some people that are like, you know, fuck off. Mm. I'm sure there are. I'm sure there are. Mm. Uh but I yeah, but stealing food from the homeless people, like what is are they just saying because they're so disruptive that they can't like do their business or something? Is that what the implication is? Yeah. Or are they literally just going up and smacking food out of homeless people's mouths? <laughs> they could just going down, yeah. like, they're just not letting them in the soup kitchens. They're like, Nope. No soup yeah, for that, you. <laughs> that would be a much more entertaining reality than I think the one that we actually have. But like when when he starts off that sentence after he's talking about having COVID, and then he goes, and I have a message, we will not be frightened, and blah blah blah. I thought he was going to go on to say, or you know, we will defeat this virus, however you defeat a virus. But yeah, I thought he was going to like continue it about viruses, and then he's like, we will not be intimidated by those who would insult our small business owners, and for those that will steal food from the homeless. Like, wh- what are you talking about? Fucking dude is crazy. Anyway. We won't give in to those who fly racist flags. We won't cave. (laughs) He's like, I saw that one, that video. You guys saw the video, right? I shared it on my socials. You saw that video of the Nazi flag, didn't you? Didn't you all see? You all saw it, right? Yeah, that one. That (laughs) one. one. Yeah, they kicked out, didn't they? Somebody from his office got caught, like, being in the protest, like pretending to be a protester. No, shit. Yeah, I, yeah, somebody shared a picture. You know, granted, take that with a grain of salt. You know how it is with people sharing pictures and drawing, <laughs> drawing conclusions from them. But the guy looks exactly like somebody in uh, Trudeau's office, so it was kind of funny. I would not be surprised. To those who engage in vandalism or dishonor the memory of our veterans. There is no. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. What? I think it has to do. Wasn't there a statue that got, like they put like a <coughs> like a Canadian flag over and like uh, something in his arm and like threw a scarf around it and maybe put a trucker hat on it or something? But, Just having a bit of fun. But where was this when people were demolishing statues and spray painting stuff everywhere for weeks on end? Oh Where well, was this that, love of yeah, but those were the bad country. ones. Those were the bad ones. Yeah, you're right. It was the we wrong to, sort. Basically, what we need to do is we need to try to erase any type of like uh, monuments or yeah. reminders that not everything has been perfect forever. Mm. Uh, so we don't ever want to be reminded of those things because if we're reminded of those things, Mark, like it makes me very uncomfortable. You're I right. really, I just don't like it. You know, I just Sorry. would rather just like let's just drop them in the fucking ocean. Let's just get Start, it done yeah. and over with. Yeah. I mean, Mount Rushmore, you know, I want to press the button. You know, I want to press the button when they put up the high explosives. I want to be there. I want to press the button myself. Yeah. And I'm going to like, I'm probably going to find a Native American person and I'm going to hold their hand. We're going to cry together. It's going to be very beautiful. <laughs> that would be amazing. Or you could carve a new face of Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah, that would go over. Actually, 
Not a new face, Mark. We got to clean the slate and then just have Donald Trump. Oh, yeah. Face. Perfect. Or yeah, actually, not even his face, one. just his name. And oh, giant, oh, in and gold. giant gold letters. Yeah. Oh, that would, that would suit the nature up in, where is that? North Dakota? South Dakota? Yeah, I think so. It's yeah. one of those two. I think it's North Dakota. That'd be lovely there. Yeah. Go on, Justin. Tell us more. No place in our country for threats, violence, or hatred. <laughs> so to those responsible for this behavior, it needs to stop. <laughs> to the politicians exploiting people's fears. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, he's like, uh, to, to myself, note to self. Yeah, exactly. Um, I like how he's like standing in front of like some sort of masculine outdoors looking situation. There's like a porch. There's some wood back there. Like, you know, he's cutting wood. He Maybe he's got a fireplace Snow. in there. No. You know, this is Canada. We have snow wherever he is. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know where he is. He must but it be... looks like it could be a nice Canadian wilderness. I'm st- I'm with you guys. Yeah. Not like the uh, the metrosexual yeah. uh, pleasure palace that he probably lives in. Communist, yeah. <laughs> everything's, yeah. Very, everything's just steel. Yeah. <laughs> steel color. Steel just concrete. gray. Steel. Very drab, but very chic. Very yeah. chic. What do they call it? Like Soviet chic. Soviet is, that, chic is, that, is, is that what they call it? Yeah, like there's a real thing. Because in fairness, although the majority of it, especially if you're a poor or a middle class person, not that you really had a middle class in, in Soviet Russia, but they did do some crazy architecture. Oh, yeah. Some gorgeous Absolutely stuff. Holy shit. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. Anyway. Yeah, 1000%. I, I mean, ask you. Yeah. Sorry, dude. No, no, you go for it. Okay to think long and hard about the consequences of your actions. The nearly 90% of truckers across the country who've gotten vaccinated, who continue working hard to keep us fed and keep our economy moving. Thank you. Well, like peacefully protesting. I was just trying to find out, like, can you see what that sign says? It says something about the political divide. Uh oh, so, something like we are united. We are you, un- or we must unite. We must unite. No political, political divide. divide. Oh, politicians divide. We must unite. Ah, there it is. Politicians divide. I think that's a that's a perfectly fine statement. I completely agree. Like that dude gets. Well, it. this is the thing. Like, are they like they're trying to like <laughs> drum up this kind of this hysteria about it? Like they're do they're being violent. They're they're vandalizing. They're they're eating homeless people's food because they're not actually doing anything. They're just doing mm. a what what we at least in the United States, and I know it's not like that exactly like that in Canada, but you have the right to especially to protest and have a peaceful protest. That was the whole fucking argument for the past two years mm. about what that constitutes. And uh, what is more peaceful than this? Sure, maybe annoying if you're trying to get downtown. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but, but like, but whatever. Uh-huh. I mean, this is this is so. When this side of the aisle, when the more conservative side of the aisle does something like this, it's not okay. But if you're if you're a fucking nutcase where you're trying to make excuses for violence and destruction Child and sex. disrupting people's lives, well, then that's okay. That's okay to go block a highway. It's yeah. okay to do those things in those circumstances because, oh, my God, that's the biggest threat the country is facing. But 100%. if you do this where people just want to, like, literally be able to go to a restaurant or work dude it, it, you took the words out of my mouth like in this country we had we've had all of the same sort of groups that you've got in america you know kind of ironic when there's people saying hands up don't shoot in a country where policemen yeah. don't have guns <laughs> but you know we also had uh what do they call insulate britain which was a greeny you know a company sorry a uh, an organization activist organization called insulate britain who was saying, and I'm sure there's truth to this, if we insulate every house in Britain, then we will have to use less heating, which will pollute the atmosphere a little bit less. And like, I get it, but sure. the UK is 1% of the world's population. Mm-hmm. Um, 1%. We emit just under 1% of the world's emissions. And we're a little island in the North Atlantic. And I believe we have made the second most progress in the world in terms of cleaning up our emissions and our carbon footprint. So I feel like we're doing good, but you had people gluing themselves to roads in London. 
Oh, I remember that, yeah. And people couldn't get ambulances in and out because you had these freaking stupid, like, 60-year-old doctors, like, gluing and bonding themselves to the tarmac. And then when the people are trying to get them up because they're like, we need to get this ambulance through to someone's having a heart attack. You had this one guy, I remember specifically, he's a doctor, and he's like, oh, you're hurting me. I'm like, of course it hurts. Yeah. You just bonded no your shit. face to the tarmac. Like what? <laughs> what clownish horseshit! Like what? This is like their sense of entitlement, their their righteous indignation. It's yeah. so impotent and so feckless. It's just there to, so they can pat themselves on the back and be like, "I also was arrested, Toby. I was also yeah. arrested. Thank you, brother." <laughs> like, and then, so they can go have their like, go to a party and talk about it. This is like so, vegan activists are the same thing. I've spent a lot of time deep diving into de- vegan activists. If you go to the ch- our channel on Zoobox, uh, we had a debate between a butcher and a vegan activist. You could tell me how you thought it went. Uh, oh, I saw that was good. But um, but what I'm saying is like they their their goals are so broad and abstract that they're actually impossible to accomplish. They don't ever focus on some sort of singular thing. Like you had brought up, like if you were. Like more of like into like the green, uh, you know, renewable energy stuff like that. Like, okay, we gotta we want to lessen our carbon footprint. Okay, we'll start there. Mm. You don't need to throw everything into that basket because that's oftentimes that's what they do. They're yeah. like, this is about climate equity and climate change. You're like, what are you talking about? Do you care about climate change? Do you want people to lessen their carbon footprint? Do you want to provide practical solutions oh. for people to do that, or do you want to just hear yourself talk? Vegans yeah. do the same thing. I couldn't. I some of the shit some of those people say blew my mind. I was so mind blown. They're talking about like equitable animal sanctuaries. Not enough brown people are into veganism, so we need to do that. Like, are you trying to save the planet or save animals, or do you care about how you look? Like the optics of it. You know, it's it's obnoxious. I apologize. I'll well, show no, you. no, it's all good. I completely agree. I think it's about going to the their dinner party and then being like oh what were you doing at the weekend i was gluing myself to the streets to you know reduce emissions so uh leonardo dicaprio can come up to you and give you a fist bump and say solidarity brother hold on i gotta go power up the jet (laughs) yeah absolutely okay who've gotten vaccinated who continue working hard to keep us fed and keep our economy moving Thank you. Uh, Truckers have... But now, like, I'm sorry to keep stopping here. Now he cares about the economy. <laughs> yeah, I feel like yeah. it's a bit too late for that, Justin. Anyway, you want to say something? No, I, I, I agree with you. 100%. Okay. Like, it's just something that was like, oh, well, you know, not ever, not one more life, no matter what it costs. Yeah. What Even if it kills that? millions of people... <laughs> Yeah. Like by by happen not by circumstance by the circumstance we're creating that's fine but as long as they don't die of covid yeah absolutely of <laughs> tough jobs long hours on the road days away from their families real challenges particularly over the past two years as they've continued to step up to put food on our shelves and on our tables wow. to support us with life-saving medication and so that's supplies. what he's, yeah this is what he's he's really mad about he's like he thinks these truckers are just being lazy it's like why did you stop guys yeah you were everything i had what is this all about <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy man though just seeing that all those trucks that's, yeah it's, uh... it is a it's a pretty um how dare i say it's like a powerful display of like what a working class collective could actually accomplish if it had the gumption to do so. Absolutely. And something that, that worries me about this incident is that, in my humble opinion, I think, uh, sadly, we're probably heading towards some sort of sort of globo fascist future. And I know that that's, that's a very like hot statement. But what, what I mean is, I think we can see what's going on. And we can see that around the world, a lot of you know, it's becoming the thing for governments to just take complete power. Um, mm-hmm. You can see it in China. And as most people can see, you know, China is 15 years away from being twice as powerful as the U.S. has yep. ever been. 
And that doesn't make me happy to say that, believe me, but I'm just... I'm it's just, just the reality. Sort of, it's just reality. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm just espousing the truth if it if it follows even close to the rate of growth. And it has not had that much growth for the last five years, but just following that rate, it will be twice as powerful in 2035 than well, the but, US was at its peak. Because events like this give them the circumstance, give them the ability to come in with constant government intervention. Uh, to the point where they're going to take over corporations. Yeah. And if you like people don't know at home, uh, kind of a, a, a turn of phrase or the description of what like fascism is, is the merging of government and corporation. Yeah. Right. Like that's one of the things that uh, it's usually like described as. Yeah. And that is exactly that's happening already. I mean, it's kind of already there Yeah. in terms, especially like just speaking for the United States. I mean, the amount of lobbying that goes on, the amount of politicians that are heavily invested and involved or have worked for like the biggest corporations on the planet shell um, bp shell yeah. bp like any type of uh, you know, <laughs> uh, any type of uh, weapons manufacturers all that kind of stuff and they all Great just deal. line each other's pockets constantly it's this big crony circle jerk yeah and uh, you know china does it just in a more bureaucratic way you know they just sign you straight up to it rather than kind of covering it in uh covering it as as lobbying does you know lobbying doesn't make it that clear whereas in china they're just there well they're in china pretty... they try to act like they're magnanimous they're like listen yeah like we'll help you if you give us like a controlling share of your company yeah absolutely. <laughs> like but and but <laughs> like the fine print is like oh you actually have to anyways like we're not gonna <laughs> allow you yeah. not to like i think if a company scales to a certain size like it's like mandatory yeah, and, and then you know that's what happened with a uh, Huawei, Huawei, the cell phone company. Huawei, Huawei, Huawei. Huawei. Yeah, that, and the other thing as well in China that they've been doing since I used to do business in China ten years ago, not in China but with with the Chinese. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. One of the things that they do as well is they reserve the right to take any of your designs and intellectual property. Yeah. Sometimes. You know, they don't even, they're not even that nice about it. They'll just literally take it. But yeah, I mean, nothing, they, they will do whatever they want whenever they want. Yeah, they don't give a shit. Dude. They steal everything. Right. All of the technology they have, all of their apps, all that stuff is built. Uh, they just steal it. That was yeah. one of the arguments Google made for having a censored version of Google for the, for, for China. Mm. Because they're, Google is like, well, we don't want our, our, our algorithm to be stolen. Mm. So we're just going to provide it to them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's it's yeah, it's it's pretty frightening. And these are the kind but... of people that will lecture you about like using proper pronouns. Make sure you have that in your bio. Uh so when people address you, they know how to call you. But, you know, we'll work with the Chinese government and uh you know, who is responsible for untold amounts of human suffering. Yeah. I really great some great priorities we have like uh for our for our business leaders in this country, in your country, camps, in the world. Slave labor. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. But what I was going to say was what worries me about this incident itself is that I feel like we are on the cusp. I mean, people have been saying this for the last 20 years, but I feel like we're, now we really are there. We're on the cusp of autonomous, uh, we call them lorries, but trucks, whatever, yeah. truck drivers. Yeah, that's and the future. I worry that this incident has already made a lot of Western governments just immediately think we can't run the risk of this happening or for Canada happening again. So we need to invest heavily in auto in autonomous trucks. I think, yeah, it's like something that would probably would speed up that timeline. It would yeah. exacerbate their, cause it's going to happen. It's inevitable. Like the, yeah. most things, most service things are going to become automated. They already are for, to a large degree. I mean, Especially in the United States, like if you go to like a grocery store, if you go to like a Walmart or a big box store, like the vast majority of it is self checkout stuff. You don't really Same. talk to anybody. Um, yeah. And that's, you know, that's just gotten more and more and more over the past 10 years. Yeah. And I don't see that changing at all. And this gives them the pretext to just really go into actually probably maybe invest government money in it. That's what I think. Yeah. yeah. Even if it's hidden, you know, because some countries they won't be able to do it as overtly. 
Well, because they're going to use something like 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 a pandemic as an yeah, excuse what to be like, pandemic? well, we can't disrupt. We can't disrupt supply chains. Yeah. Look what happened. Look what the, the supply chains got disrupted, even though yeah. that's something a problem they created themselves uh, by not allowing people to uh, do it, do their jobs. <laughs> and so, I think to myself, there are a lot of people that you would have thought would want to take part in what could potentially be the last real workers of the world unite kind of thing. You know, like this, this potentially could be the last really big, especially in Canada, the last really big like workers movement. This is how the workers grind things to a halt when you start messing with their lives. But instead of that, the same people that want to tell you what pronouns they use and, you know, how awful you are for being, well, I won't go into that. But anyway, okay. these same people should be down there, like linking arms with them, going, Yeah, let's do it. But well, this 30, is, this is, 30, this yeah, 30 years ago, they would have, right? Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. People yeah. from 20, 30 years ago would have been there. Yeah, because they, they, they were the party of the working class, because this is that's the grift. They're just coming exactly. at whatever is the most like vulnerable, emotionally charged groups of people that are often treated unfairly, right? Mm. And they use that as a way to be like, hey, we're going to help you. We're going to provide you an answer. We're going to provide you some solutions. And then they get all in, integrated with unions and uh, workers' rights uh, kind of organizations. And now they've just flipped on them all. Now, yep. they've just, now they've just turned their backs on them. Thanks for the help. Thanks for spreading our bullshit all over the fucking world. And uh, see ya. Yeah. You know, we can't yeah. have this. Like, you, you guys, like, listen, you should have just been, you should have just did what you were told. Like, it's, yeah. it's really weird, honestly. It's very, it's, it's kind of, when you start really thinking about it, it's even grosser. And Absolutely. That there, and that there is probably some sort of broad overview. It's not something everybody's like conscious of. Not everybody that's involved in these organizations or these groups or whatever is conscious that this is happening. It's like a lobster in water or a frog in water slowly being brought to boil. Um, like they don't realize what they're part of. They don't understand it on some sort of like br- in the broader context and the long view, the long play of things. So many people are so stuck in the moment uh, that they don't think about the things they involve themselves with in a long-term sense. Like what are the long, what does this mean for the long term? Like you can't just think about what happens tomorrow. Like it's funny that you say that because something that I I didn't mention earlier when we were talking about why, why I was out for a bit and why I hadn't made videos in a, in a period of time. I, I ended up reading. So Dominic Cummins is this guy who's kind of, he's sort of like a populist center rightist, but very populist, you know, very for the working man. He's from the north of the UK. And um, he, because he had great success with the Brexit thing, like he was one of the five people that was picked to basically put a plan together. Like, how are we going to do this? Uh, What are we going to get out of it for the country? And like, what's what's our best strategy? And so one of the strategies he had was not spending a lot of money at all on on um, like adverts or advertising or marketing, either in sort of real life or online, until a week before the actual vote. And that was one of the things that swung it because everybody else was saying, oh, they've not got a lot of money because they're not, you know, we're not seeing any adverts. And it was like sort of 50-50. Maybe there was like a slight, push more for remain in europe Mm -hmm. and then they just unleashed this like you know 150 million or what it was in the last week and that completely song anyway i was reading something of his on um what's the new journalism site that everybody's substack oh yeah yeah well it's uh, it's like a blogging site yeah yeah i was reading i was reading this really long article of his as somebody because he also worked uh as like a an aide and advisor to the prime minister and I was reading something of his that was talking about um, how politics actually works compared to how, you know, these kind of blue tick mark people from each, from both sides and how even people like you and I, like from both sides, think it works. Yeah. And that article of his, I'll send it to you. Yeah, please do. That, 
that changed my way of thinking i think forever like the stuff that he said was so you know it's it kind of obvious but then at the same time it was just shocking well sometimes so, it's it's like you under, you understand all of the pieces and you see them and yeah. they all feel disparate and disconnected and when somebody like lines them up and makes a, like a coherent statement out of all of them like a coherent observation yeah. about how they line up like it's sometimes you're like oh my god how did i not like how well, does this not that, just click with me like cuz you had a sense of it but yeah. you couldn't like find like the right way to articulate it yeah i mean I, one of his main points really was just you know, a lot of people, including me, we like to think that certain politicians, they're just stupid. And and I will make an exception. Justin Trudeau really is just He does seem stupid. kind of dumb, yeah. But, you know, someone like Pelosi or Biden before he became a little bit senile. Yeah, they're um, not stupid. They're not stupid. They're, they're not fucking stupid at all. No. They know everything you know, but they also know that there is a plan. And the plan may not work out how they want it to work out, but what they want is power mm -hmm. and yeah. they want to be seen as popular. Yeah. And there's a, there's an ego, yeah, an ego yeah. vanity part of it. And I, cause it's human nature. You have to look at them, not like cartoon characters. They're not, yeah. they're people and they're motivated by the same things that you and I are motivated just on a larger scale. Yeah. And uh, cause I think, you know, there is something to say, like, it's fun, like, oh, look at old grandpa, President Applesauce brains or whatever. Like, <laughs> it's easy to say that. And it may be that may be partially true at this point. <laughs> uh, but like, it's it doesn't actually help you to understand what motivates them or how these decisions yeah. are made, because you're basically letting them off the hook. You're saying they're too stupid to know yeah. to do anything else. And you're like, no, they know exactly what they're doing. Yeah, they know exactly what they're doing, probably on a deeper level than you have any awareness of or you'll yeah, ever have awareness of do you think like somebody like aoc right yeah she seems kind of a little a little justin trudeau a little bit at times yeah. but she's not like a complete moron and she no. knows uh, like she knows what she's doing in the sense of like kind of building a base for the future like she's she reaching knows who out her crowd is exactly but she knows well she knows who her crowd is she knows the demographic she knows where they go yeah she knows how to get them and get new ones yeah, new people because she's yeah. appealing to like this youth factor doing Instagram live yeah. streams of her cooking and talking about politics and that people eat that shit up, especially yeah. if you think if you think you're like a smart, informed teenager. Yep. And that's you're how... smart, informed because you watch AOC live streams. I mean, <laughs> that's the future, dude. They're going to be on Twitch. They're going to be doing all that. They're, everybody has a fucking podcast. Yeah. Ted Cruz tr tries to like do the same thing, but it's Ted Cruz. I kind of like Ted Cruz nowadays. I used to think it was a no. I I don't mind Ted Cruz um is in terms of like a a politician as a as a, oh, as right. a politician well as a politician and as a person because he seems like he's self effacing yeah and he's not obviously he's smart he's a, kind of a constitutionalist yeah and um but he's also like kind of a feckless politician he doesn't really yeah. actually get very much done there's a lot of great sound bites there's a lot of great video clips i can watch of him tearing into somebody but what yeah. what results of it like what comes of it nothing nothing and and, and that was what um dominic come one of the things that dominic cummins was saying and i know listen i know that a lot of the stuff that i am saying is not the stuff that blew my mind so hopefully people aren't thinking well this is really obvious there's there's other stuff in there that you want to read that is really mind-blowing but you know he was saying most politicians just want to lean up against each other yeah. That's why they 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 often never actually do anything. So you have got Lindsey Graham in America, who just spends his whole career, you know, being like, "Stop doing that." Yeah, you know, vice versa. You have people on the other side that because, do a similar thing. Because, because at I, the end of the day, I, yeah, yeah. like, sorry, I was just gonna say, at the end of the day, I know a lot of Americans, and I feel it here as well in the UK. So a lot of Brits feel this way that we we feel like. Things are changing so much. Like oh, I don't know, I don't, I can't take it anymore. But and and this goes especially for Americans because I actually think that things have changed quite a bit here. I don't think things have really changed that much for most Americans. Like if you take a, I don't know, a lower middle class, forty year old American in the nineteen, like in the early nineteen nineties. 
and you compare that to how they live their life to now, other than I, I would say that the intrinsic value of the dollar has gone down, I don't think life is that much more restrictive. Do you know what I mean? Um, I mean, it's subtle ways, right? There's subtle things. There's just like certain, like uh, there's probably more restrictions and there's more laws that are maybe run in the background of things you don't even really recognize that you're just not going to come up against very often. So you don't even know that they're there hmm. for most people. Um, but like, yeah, I think quality of life is probably very similar. I mean, there's, you know, there's, I guess there's, there's it's a, you know, it'd be a very long conversation to really get into it. Like the, the, the minutia of like the economy and the wages stagnating and the, the devaluation of the dollar. We may actually be in a time right now where we're starting. It is actually starting to change for the worse yeah, right now. Like up until now, though, there's they've been able to kind of maintain even if it was a facade for a while, like property. Well, actually, you know, the big thing was the uh, the housing bubble, like the yeah. 2008. That was something that changed a lot, I think. It definitely changed things. But but what I'm talking about is just laws and restrictions and things like that. Well, like, I mean, uh, it's like 2001, dude, like the Patriot Act, that's a big one for the United States. It's like a big sea change for the United States for your personal privacy. Like that, that's hmm. huge. That's a, That was a huge infringement, if you want to call it that, on the notion of what Americans thought of as like their right to privacy. Hmm. Um, and there was a big conversation. There's a big debates and arguments about the nature of it. What does it mean? And like, well, hey, if you got nothing to hide, why do you care if the government looks at your emails? That. I remember I was like 17 and somebody said that to me. I'm like, well, isn't that the kind of that's not the point? <laughs> yeah. No, I remember that was the big that was the big kind of the stuff with Edward Snowden. Like, this is what I mean. Like, there's so much stuff that's going on in the periphery, in the background of people's lives that they don't even know is happening. Mm. And you have to wonder why at some point you're like, well, what are they doing with all this stuff? The biggest thing that I see happening is a lot of the world is just getting ready to begin serving their new master. Because I think people are a fool if they don't think that people do serve America, at least the Western allies. You know, yeah. we all play, a, and this is like not me insulting the allies or america i'm just pointing out the fact that if you play if you if you play a key role in the petrodollar let's say so you agree that you will pay for energy in the us dollar yeah you allow america to go into insane amounts of debt um and you're playing the game as you know being one of their allies and you'll receive some benefits from that at some cost but we're now at the point where China is, you know, really starting to hard charge. And we're seeing America has just passed the point where all economists worth their salt for the last 25 years had said 28 to 29 trillion will be the level where America will never recover unless the growth is 10% plus yeah, a year. Yeah. 28 to 29 trillion is around about the level where the bubble is going to burst. Mm -hmm. And I just think those two things happening in a similar time, so that kind of petrodollar Western allies bubble bursts at the same time that China have come along and said, you know, we'll lend you money. Well, that's the yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like exactly, because yeah, I think you're completely right, one thousand percent right. I think uh, the American Empire is probably in its decline since waning years. Maybe take it might take fifty years to like really get to a place where it's where it's truly displaced mm. but uh yeah that's definitely in the midst of happening and our pol our american politicians the progressive wing seem like they are rushing it forward because yeah. i think secretly they want it to happen i think they do but yeah. i don't think they will when it does no they won't like it because nobody this is what i was talking about earlier nobody thinks about the long game no. They just think about the immediate. Why do you mean you can't give us like a four trillion dollar relief package? Yeah. Like, what are you guys doing? What are you talking? Are do you see how much yeah. money we fucking printed in the past couple of years? Or Why look can't at our I deficit not work ever. What's that? I'm just saying. I've heard a lot of people saying things recently, like, "Why can't we just not go to work?" Oh, the anti-work movement, which is just starting to pick up steam, which is just a, a laundering of socialism, communism. It's, it's the same shit. It's the same shit, just with a different name. 
So you think there should be children that have to work 20-hour days in a phone factory? Yeah, that's but, okay. But you shouldn't have to work because that's capitalism. Yeah. <laughs> it just Anyway, let's get back to, uh, to Justin because I feel like I'm darkening the mood. I'm sorry. <laughs> we have relied on you, and you can rely on us to continue to stand with you and allow you to do your jobs safely. I have attended protests and rallies in the past uh, when I agreed with the goals, when I supported <laughs> the people uh, expressing their concerns and their... Wild, Justin. They're like, well, when I agreed with them, I was cool with it. But now that I don't, <laughs> uh, I'm not cool with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it was good when it was BLM and stuff. But yeah, those days are... Issues, Black Lives Matter is oh. an excellent example of that. But I have also chosen to not go anywhere near protests that have expressed hateful rhetoric, violence towards fellow citizens, uh, and a disrespect, uh, not just of science, but of uh, the frontline health workers and, quite frankly, the 90% of truckers who have been doing the right thing to keep Canadians safe, to put food on our tables. There is always a right to protest peacefully that I and others will defend fully as part of this democracy. There is not a right to incite violence, to perform acts of violence, or to spew hatred. I feel like if those things were readily available, uh, they would show it to you. Yes. They would show you that, that footage. They would not be hiding it. It's like a you know, J6 there, right? Like there's a few pockets of intense violence, and that's all you see. Mm. So I think if they had that available to them, they would definitely uh, be inundating every every place with that footage. And I haven't seen any of it. I have not seen any crazy violence. I haven't seen anything other than maybe some people push each other, yelling yeah. at each other, uh, which is whatever. Like you're out of it's a protest. Like it happens. For so for someone to convince me that this is, you know, extremely bad. I want to see shops being burnt down. I want to see yeah. supermarkets being looted. Yeah, but wouldn't oh. that just be mostly peaceful, though? Oh, yeah, the, the, yeah that's a good point. Yeah, 93% peaceful trucking. How, uh, he, he went out there with a straight face and says, like, well, I marched alongside, like, BLM, something. Okay. Why did he what, bring that up? What happened? What happened when, when, uh, when the BLM marches were happening? What happened? Yeah. Were there bad actors involved, Justin? It was mostly peaceful. Um, yeah, yeah I, I think that was... I wanted to show you that. I don't know if you'd seen it already or similar things, but I just thought, like, this guy has zero scruples. I'm not sure what a scruple is, but... <laughs> I think it's grit, integrity, whatever it is. <laughs> but, like, yeah, no, I totally agree, because it's shocking, like, how on its face, you're like, it's so full. They can't... They don't even hide the ball anymore. They don't even uh, do that. They just say it. And you, it's yeah. so frustrating because you know what's crazy? At the end of the day, there's nothing you can do about it. And know. they know that. And they have the confidence know of knowing that. And that they know that they can... They'll wait this out. They'll wait this out. People will have to go home. People will have... To, like, nobody's going to be able to do this for, like, a year. No. So they're gonna. it's going to go on for another week or two at the most. And they'll wait it out. And then they'll just go back and be like, oh, that was nice. Yeah. That was nice. Good. And then they'll start investing money in autonomous trucking. Oh, there he's already looking. He's like, he's trying to get Elon on the phone. He's trying to get yeah. anybody on the phone. Bill, well, Bill Gates, Mr. Gates, I need to talk to you. Dude, there's a 25 year old Canadian guy who's already started a huge company. And I actually think he's gone down into America, obviously, because there's more money there and you've got a much, much bigger audience. Because yeah. Canada's only like 23 million people or something. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so he'll probably just bring him back up and be like, you know, you want to come and work for us, eh? Yeah. And they will be the first big country, maybe. Where... Well, they could. They, well, they might be able to be just because, like you said, population size would be like a good test case. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And they're spread the fuck out in Canada. Like, Canada's very sprawling. People are, that 23 million people is spread out. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a true. lot of trucking going on. There's a lot of trucking going on up there. <laughs> there is a lot of trucking uh, <laughs> up north. 
I feel like Canada, though, would be one of those countries where certain parts of that country you would really rather have a human because you know where they have to like drive across like ice road truckers where yeah they have to drive across frozen lakes and uh, i don't know i feel yeah, like they're, they're probably still gonna have to do that for a while those guys yeah. are gonna have secure security for for another probably decade yeah. until we figure it out which i think they could probably could dude it's probably much easier than we or much further along than we're even aware of I think it probably is. I mean, we they, have there is there are self driving cars already. Oh, I know. I mean, because oh. in the reason you know the way you can know that is like there's like three stories of people being hit and killed by them. Yeah, uh, but they, they do exist. They're out there. There you, you can buy them, dude. I would kill for that. I would kill for it. I'd kill. See, I'd kill thousands of homeless. I'm joking. Um, <laughs> I'd be mowing them down. No, um, but I would. I hate driving. I hate I it. Fucking fucking. Love I fucking I know you're you're a car guy, but me, yeah, I'm like, yeah. put just let me get in the pod and then let me put in the address and I'll take a nap. <laughs> but what do you want pods for? Tell me the things in a day that you would happily put over to a to a robot. The so things, driving. Yeah. Yes, driving. So the school run. School runs, uh, any anything. What about watching? <laughs> what about watching things on the computer or on the TV? Well, they I can't do that for me. I could do that while I'm in the pod being driven. Yeah, I could get, imagine the, imagine the work I could get done. Imagine the work. That's the way I look at it. I'm trying to be a productive member of society. Imagine what I could get done. Imagine the Twitter scrolling I could do. Let me ask you: If you could press a button though, and just get a hundred k a year, but you're not allowed to work. Would you do that? Hundred thousand dollars a year, yeah. and I have to just press one button. Yeah, one time. And yep, and you're not allowed to work. I'm not allowed to work. But what constitutes work, though, Mark? I feel like this is one of those devil's deals where they're like, <laughs> "Oh, and I'll because I'll come in here to the office. Well, I get all this free time. I think. Yeah, I'm, no, no, those. no. You can't be. You can't but do that, any streaming, any videos. Oh, then no, I wouldn't do that. Really? Yeah, I wouldn't do that. Wow. I'd get my wife to do it. (laughs) (laughs) She wouldn't care. She'd be like, good. (laughs) But I wonder how far away we are from just becoming like that, especially in the West, how far away we are from just becoming just like a squishy pile of goo that just has vague interactions with something online. Yeah, that's what we're, that's what's happening. That's what like, you know, people laugh about stuff like the metaverse. I'm like, that's just the beginning of your future, dude. Like, you know, Disney Disney got it right. You know, Wally. When mm. you find out what the people are like, and they're like these big fat globs, and they're on these little floating scooters, and they mm. order everything online, and they're just stuck in front of a screen all day. Like that's happening. That's yeah. going to happen. I guarantee it's going to. I don't see how can it not. If we were to say like, could you keep continue to trend in the, the direction we are? In terms yeah. of like, because everything is about convenience. Yeah. And people accept a lot when it makes your life easier. They will. They'll accept a lot. And uh, yeah. like, so if actually, you know, like the question you asked me, if you could press a button and make $100,000, I think a lot more people would do it than I would be comfortable admitting. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think you have to be really into something to to still want to do it. So I know a lot of people that would that would agree with you. That if they had a choice of just getting in a car and you know saying take me to Safeways, Jeeves, and the yeah. car just drives you there, and then you get out and you go and do your shopping. But <clears throat> excuse me, but because I obviously really like cars and and you know I quite like driving, I find it fun and invigorating. Mm-hmm. Then obviously I would want to do that, but there's an awful lot of things that I wouldn't want to do as well. So yeah, I think you kind of have to really want to do something to do it nowadays in the West, whereas. I think in the East and like in rising economies, you know, a lot of those people, there's growth to be had there. There's 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 big position change in life to be made in somewhere like well, many parts of Africa, many mm-hmm. parts of Asia. Um, but it just seems like in the West we sort of peaked. We we're living on so almost like borrowed wealth, like wealth from our ancestors, like especially yes. in the UK. Like we have no natural resources. We no longer are like, you know, we used to be kind of the, the pinnacle of manufacturing for, you know, it used to be like Sheffield Steel and mm-hmm. all those sorts of things. Cars, like, 
I don't know, like half of all the sort of prestigious car companies were British. Yeah. And now you just kind of got people that are waiting for their grandparents to die because they know they've got half a million. And that half a million essentially was gifted to them by an economy which was given faith to borrow money through the power it grew with its empire. Yeah. And at you some point I mean? that's some point that's gonna run out. It it's running out now. Yeah. Yeah. So like, and there's no avoiding that. Like you can't just keep writing checks. Somebody's gonna cash them at some point. Yep. You know? Yeah. Okay, so uh, I thought we would end it on a high note. So there you go, everyone. <laughs> yeah, there you go, everybody. Enjoy that. Uh, uh, you know, enjoy the silence. You guys like Depeche Mode? You can like, pop <laughs> that in, just listen to it yeah. over and over and over again. That would be great. But yeah, you know? thanks for watching, guys. Go and check Sean out on everything Zoo Box. Not the German Zoo Box. No, not, that, not those people. No. You gotta look up a uh, zoo box channel. You'll see my face. You'll see animals, multicolored animals with pastel colors, and uh, it's it's really nice. My wife made it. Link in the description. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you again soon. Winston stopped writing, partly because he was suffering from cramp. He did not know what had made him pour out this stream of rubbish.